Um, next week then, we'll do all our favourite songs of the year, shall we? No, I think it's gotta be two weeks time, actually. Oh, two weeks, is it? Yeah, we'll I'm do away Christmas. next week as well. What do you mean you're away next week? What are you doing, Zoe Ball Show? I'm going, going up north again. Why? So Claire's gonna be here with you. Okay. Yeah, at uh, least she- What are you doing up north? She does her job. Just, uh, Suzanne's dad's birthday, uh, so. I bet he's a party animal. I bet I've read that they really kick off, don't they? Is it? Yeah. Uh, when? So you gonna be raving? Can't concentrate now. Oh, well, he's all stressed because the lady from MTV is here. She's gonna film his little face. So the what? Thing, the things he said in the week. He was so worried. He's got worried about the spot on his head. That won't come out. Just that, so you got your best side. on that side. That's all right. All right. <laughs> yeah. No, the camera's out. Look, he's getting nervous now. Okay, Carl. Ignore the camera. Okay, just ignore the camera. Okay. Now, me and Steve have done our research for you, and we've got two amazing things to tell you. Uh, what should I tell them first? About the baby or the. Well, the they're crab? both equally fascinating, so you, you choose. Um, I'll tell you the crab thing first, right? Um, we, uh, Steve actually saw this thing in the Guardian of the Week uh, about our research thing, and then we looked it up, we looked into it on Friday, and it is incredible. Right, listen to this. There's a, a thing in, um, um, in a bay in, um, uh, New England, right, where it's, it's like the biggest. Um, uh, they make silicon chips and stuff for computers, right? And because of the data protection thing, after they've d done them, because uh, they have to destroy the plates, right, where the information's sort of put onto them, but there's still flakes of silicon. They sort of grind it down straight away, and some of the flakes got into the bay, okay, but some of the information's still on the, even the slight like granules of silicon. Anyway, gets in the water, and silicon is rather like, um, a, a carbon. Derivative. I reckon if there had been life on another planet and it wasn't carbon based, it would be silicon based. Because right. that's simple sugars and proteins, it's just COH and that, and it can work with silicon, right? Anyway, the crabs have been taken up, it's on in the water, and they, they looked out on the beach, and uh, over years the crabs have started um, sort of putting themselves in formations, like geometric format, and they couldn't work out why they were doing this. And uh, when they put them in the experiment, they sort of like chopped them up and they found they'd taken on silicon. And it had sort of got into their brain and they were downloading information. They actually, they picked up little things because it's just chemical, um, you know, like uh, electrical impulses had got information off the silicon chip and they were interfacing it. But, this is the amazing thing, one bloke sort of thought of this and he thought, well if, if it's a simple computer with the brain, if it's just a simple sort of electrical thing, then maybe there's, there's sort of, uh, you know, we could, we could get it down. So wh what they did is they made a thing called a bio-interface and they d put it into the crab's brain, just a really simple brain, so it's measured on guard, right? And it got impulses from it and they were getting, like, computer readers, just, just flashes of, like, symbols and geometric things right, on this screen to read the crab's brain and it was stuff like, you know, fragments of a, um, what, what made them do this in the first place? Because they saw that they saw the crabs behaving differently. They were behaving differently to each other. They were just like they were, you know, intelligent, and they were sort of solving problems and all this sort of stuff. Anyway, when they downloaded the the thing, it was like a, there was um, uh, they found us. They found they found, they found a, one of the secretary's names where it had been on the silicon chip, where it was just a, like a flash of a computer screen. <coughs> but the most amazing thing is, they downloaded a memory, right, it was like a, like a snapshot where it had been burnt onto the retina of the crab, just a snapshot or something, and it was like a picture of the beach, like a couple of years ago, right? And they also did, uh, uh, incredible, it was like a, just a, a digital black and white sort of thing, so they could see what the crab had seen. Amazing. Jeez. Amazing. So Intelligent what, what, crabs. What, what are they doing Almost with them like now? Super well, they think this is the this is the upshot. They think they could use it as spy crabs because they could put these get these crabs. Also, the other thing is, as generations went on, right? So they put a crab in the, the sea or something, right? Uh, lots of crabs in, and then as generations went on, a, a newborn crab they downloaded the memory and it had the memories of. It's great, 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 all together. It had every memory that any crab had been related to it beforehand. Because it passed it on, it just passed it on. So not even ones that had been eating the, the silicon stuff? Yeah. No, th these, they... These are just like ones that have had kids. Yeah. yeah. And they've got like... And they know every... So you'd know everything your great, great, everything right the way back. So would that work if, if we ate silicon? Well, well possibly. possibly. So what, are they gonna... 
Well, they yeah. can use them for all sorts of things, though. I mean, that's that's what's incredible. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how you train it particularly. I don't know. It'd be quite tricky to train, but I'm assuming they could if they can if they can do it that way. Then presumably they can. It'd give be it like loads of silicon information, which yeah. they can then plant in it if you like within it within its sort of food. Also, if you get them onto enemy beaches, it, has, yeah. you'd have like a thousand digital cameras just yeah. well, that, they, 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 around. If you get like you know Osama bin Laden or someone, they just don't. They don't the understand the information they've got. No, they don't. They're doing it. They just download messages. So, so they're but not, the, the it's not one, like the, you could torture them and they won't be able to sort of give you the information because they wouldn't know what they, information they had because they're just But like the crab, computer. the crab, the crab, the first crab they downloaded, they just kept seeing the same picture of a big crab feeding it, which they- <laughs> Really? Yeah. Wow. That's what, like it's mother crab or something? Yeah. As just, it was memories of it as a child. But they're not in colour, presumably, because No, it's all in black and white. Yeah, black and it's just a digital camera, because it's just a- they don't see it in black and white, so it's just like a- it's just like a- uh, I don't know, I think it's-, it's I think it's burnt onto the retina or something. And, um, the only one that they kept were the ones they saw a lot of the time. Well, I mean, in a way, uh, some of the educating Ricky I've got for you today is, is on the similar lines. Right. Oh, you've uh, got to be impressed by that. You've got to no, be impressed no, no, by that. No, no, that's pretty good. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'm interested to see, you know, what, what they do. What with they it. do, what they do with the, what the crab developments are. But yeah, yeah, no, that's that's pr that's pretty good. Yeah. But I mean, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Well, that just digest it. that information because that's not even the most impressive one we found. I think it is. I suppose it's pretty impressive, but the next one's more, maybe more shocking. Okay. Right. Well, let's start tuning, and Ricky's got another example. Okay. Pure love song, classic on XFM. So that's the that's the crab that can you can download their memories. But, um, but what about other animals that are in the sea, in that same sea, eating the stuff? Have they tested them yet? I don't know. I think it, they just took it on because their um, biology, uh, to, something to do with. I presume they could take up minerals and you know I don't know why. I don't know. But anyway, um, next one. Uh, it's just on horizons. Um, uh, a bodybuilder. Yeah. Um, uh, this married, is freaky. had another bodybuilder, married another bodybuilder, yeah. right, and they're pregnant. And um, they had these tests and the baby was very large, but it was causing it pain, right, in the thing, right? And it, after a, this it is, is this extreme. Is, this it's is, almost bizarre in like... Yeah, after the, w the, the female woke up pregnant after seven months and the baby... Was walking had, around. No, it forced its way out of the vagina. Oh no way! Yeah, it forced its way out, it, and it was because it, it, it like almost had like super strength. Like, and it was pulling her along by the umbilical cord, and that, uh, and it was, it was, it was a stone. <laughs> Extraordinary. That, no, that's uh, freaky. I mean, because you talk about yeah. freaky stuff. That's made up. <laughs> what? It wasn't pulling her along. It yeah, was. well, no, it was pretty. She could yeah. feel it exactly. And it was. Do you know what I mean? Like, just went. <laughs> And just sort of squeezed it. Just got out, out cause it was ready. Because all the hormones. Because it thought stuff. it was ready. Oh God! Imagine that. Just waking up and finding that in the bottom of the bed. Freak out, wouldn't it? Because you think it was a nightmare initially. And it had hair and everything, didn't it? Yeah, because all the hormones. Hair. Like See, a hair hair hair. Hair. There was something in the week about um, you know you've got test tube babies and that now, haven't you? Mm. But they've they've managed to do it. I only caught. Half I the knew story. he'd be more impressed by the crabs than that. He doesn't care if it's no, no, human. no. I am. I'm well, telling you. I'm telling you though that um, there was something. I only caught half the story because it was busy. But uh, there's something about babies being able to be born without having any people involved. Or something. It's like putting them in the oven or something, and it's like a cake. <laughs> and after a certain amount of time, it's ready. I think I you can buy those in Argos for kids. <laughs> <laughs> it's well, it's my first baby kit. Yeah. 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 It's Play Doh, I think, that they can buy. Yeah. Well, so, what do you think of that then? The baby one. Yeah. I, I prefer the crab one. Yeah. But the baby. I mean, the baby thing's pretty. pretty horrible. Yeah. yeah. So, it was bigger than the. Than like the average. But, um, yeah, um, both made up. We've made those up. Yeah, both, both rubbish. They're both I mean, bullshit. they are both rubbish. Despite the fact they're both rubbish. Yeah. They're interesting. We made those up. Both those stupid stories up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Imagine downloading a crab's memories and seeing its mum feeding it as a child. <laughs> <laughs> Both uh, are rubbish. I had trouble. I had trouble. Yeah. I knew I was gonna have trouble with um, pushed its way out of the vagina. <laughs> yeah, I practiced that about thirty times yesterday with Stephen. I was going, I'm not gonna be able to do it, mate. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to say that. Yeah, <laughs> are you disappointed? A little bit. I, I mean, the baby one's a bit <laughs> sort of out there. Yeah, I wasn't really having having that one. No, but the, but the crab one. Mm. Um, See now, what's interesting, I think, is it's a useful experiment, Carl. <laughs> I don't know what it's taught you about yourself, <laughs> but would you say that that's revealed to you a certain thing? I don't know, maybe that you're a bit gullible. I mean, you know, what I'm saying is maybe you shouldn't accept or swallow your hook, line, and sinker everything you read on the web. 
<laughs> do you not think maybe a valuable lesson? I here? feel bad because I, I feel I said to Steve, he won't be annoyed that we conned him. He'd be annoyed that they're actually not true. You'd love that crab thing to be true, wouldn't you? It wouldn't surprise me if it did happen one day. Sure. Yeah. So, and then yeah. he'd slap And it's in the right when I said about the crabs, you know, well, I'm keeping them then. Yeah. It's yeah. cute, yeah. Right, well, I, I know what you're getting at. <laughs> with the, uh, with the educating Ricky, but, it, you know. Let's see, let's see. Feeder. Yes! Just the wrong feeder. That's my favourite feeder track ever. Uh, it's, it's bugging me. It's just like, um, a ride track from about... 10 or 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. So if if you know, put me up my misery, f email in. It's just like a ride track from about 1990. And I can't, it's just the beginning. Uh -huh. Drive me mental. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Yeah, well, uh, half hour to go. You've yeah. done your screen test. Yeah. Reluctantly. <laughs> I, I think you I think you had just such the wrong attitude. Well, it doesn't matter, does it? If, I've told you before, if things are meant to be, right, they'll happen. That's yeah. how I've got through my life, right? I'm 29 now. Yeah. Never thought you? Yeah. Well, yeah. 30, but the camera's still on. <laughs> <laughs> right? So. <laughs> and, and everything I've done in my life, I've never sort of planned it. Do you know Is what that I mean? how you stormed through your, uh, your exam? Well, look, 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 at, look at the, look at the school play, doing Little Donkey. I yeah. wasn't planning that day sure. to do the drums. It just, on the night, I couldn't help myself. And you stole the show. What when, happened? What do you mean? When, when, you know, when all the kids were playing Little Donkey, I wasn't meant to be doing my drum set in that track. I was only meant to, I think I was doing We Three Kings or something. Uh -huh. But when they started doing it, the tune, I couldn't help myself with the drumstick, just like tapping away. Right. At the, at the drum. Yeah. And then when it came on, I was like, oh, and I started doing it, and like the teacher looked at, looked over at me, and I was like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. But she sort of gave me the nod as if to say, it's all right, carry on, it's it's sounding good. <laughs> then after it, she went, you know, they love that. You can do that again tomorrow night. Yeah. So I got like an extra extra part in the play in that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that wasn't so. Planned. You were so so you were doing the drum part to We Three Kings over Little Donkey. Yeah, that's weird. That is like Fat Boy Slim or something, isn't it? When they mix up. No. Well, no, you're still mashing it up at the age of what, eight? Yeah. No. And that's what I'm saying. And that, is that planned. when, um, is that when, uh, someone was filming it and you could f hear your dad on the camcorder going, he looks like a twat? That's, that's the one, yeah. yeah. Oh. And that's why, maybe that's why I don't want to be on the telly, cos I'll always have me dad's sort of echoing voice just saying, <laughs> he shouldn't be on there, he looks, <laughs> looks like a, that's it. So, so that's, that's why I'm a bit sort of nervous about this today. Really? You think it's sort of quite... Freudian in a way, sort of. Yeah. You're actually just case for us, right? Well, plus I haven't got the look. I don't, I'm not pretending, right, that mm. I should be on the telly. What's wrong with your look for VH1? It's not right. It's not Jono right. Jono was on VH1. Was he? Yes. So I'm going up against Jono. <laughs> no. <laughs> so. He's gone now, he's moved on. Yeah, there you go, you see. Another one who they gave a chance to. Yeah. And then he was like, you know, yeah, I can do that. It's, it's built up, right? They built him up, you can do that as a job. <laughs> and then they knocked him down. And he probably started eating. Well, I don't think you can set up Jono, though. He started eating! He started eating! I'm look at him now. Yeah. Right, oh. So that's what I'm saying. So if it's meant to be, right, it, whoever's gonna watch this tape, you know, yeah. uh, thanks for the offer and that. But, you know, time will tell. Uh, <laughs> Very wise, so, yeah. So, there you go. And I tell you what, actually. Go right, on. It's, it's a bit funny, cos we're looking on the web in a week at different sayings, and, uh, <laughs> Do you know the saying? A round head does not an MTV presenter no, make. Yeah, no. Spa, uh, what's that saying? Spark, <laughs> spark, oh. spark in the pan or something? Hey, flash in the pan. Flash in the pan. Yeah. Do you know that saying? <coughs> yeah. That, that's a bit like what could happen to me, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? There I am trying to do my normal job, right? <laughs> and then you bring me in here on a Saturday. Next thing, everyone's after me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then it doesn't work out, and yeah. I'm dropped. Yeah. And that same flash in a pan, do you know how it came about? No. Um, do you know like how years ago they used to dig for gold? Gold. Yeah. Yeah. And they had like a little pan. Yeah. And they'd put the soil in, and they'd rub the soil. Yeah, and it shone in the now sun. Now and again, it shone in the sun, and they get yeah. all excited and were like, oh brilliant, some gold. And then they realised it was just the sun flashing in the pan. Yeah. And that's, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. So again, that's a bit weird how I saw that saying in the week. Almost yeah. like a little thing saying, don't be getting carried away. Omen. So, well, it makes you wonder. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Not really. So, so, tell you, things that make you wonder, you saw Darren Brown, what did he do? 
Oh, Brown no, is no, extraordinary. I, yeah, I told him, but it's a, uh, um... You should uh, peep, for a lot of people don't realise who Darren Brown is, and he's, oh, well, I we think, were, the best illusionist um, in the country. We went to, uh, Jonathan Ross's house, um, for his birthday. I didn't. Uh, no, me, uh, uh, me and Jane, and we went there, right, and there was lots of people there, and, uh, um, Darren Brown was there, yeah. and Jonathan got Darren Brown to and it was incredible, he did all these tricks, right? Um, <coughs> I mean incredible, it was just amazing. Um, and he did one, um, uh, with a bloke that was out there, uh, friend of Jonathan's, I think his name was, um, Ray, and, uh, he got him to give the pack, he said count the cards, and he counted out 52, 52 cards, yeah? yeah? But yeah, he went, think of any card in that pack. He didn't touch it yet, he's counted 52, it, it was in his hand, he said think of any card. He said, what was it? He said, three of spades or something. He went, find it in the pack, couldn't find it, he said count the cards, there was 51. Right, and he couldn't find the card, and he hadn't heard it, and we forgot about it, he went, oh, it's gone wrong, and he forgot about it, he, and he kept, so he was going, I wonder where that card is, and he kept looking at that. I found out that about a week ago, Ray went into hospital with an appendicitis, yeah, and the surgeon was really so they said was somewhat crumpled up, there was a th thing, and it was a card, it was the card that was in his thing causing appendicitis, and when he came out of surgery, there was a card from Darren Brown saying, was that your card? That's amazing, don't you think? I mean, this that's like a incredible. This thing and what, and then a crab went, I know what it is, it's a five of spades. <laughs> it's another wind up. Yeah. Yeah, well, see. <laughs> see, I'm not gonna believe anything anymore. But that's so good! If I also, if I ever... You've learned a lesson! <laughs> yeah, but say, say if all this goes wrong now, right? Cry wolf and all that. Yeah. Imagine I get dropped by MTV. <laughs> see, that would've been asked, yeah? Yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> ah! Right, they shot on firemen because they're always going on strike. <laughs> I answer the phone, it's you saying my house is on fire. I don't know what you're talking about now, Sorry, Carl. You, I actually, <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. No, I think somewhere along the line there, Carl has been recruited by the fire brigade. <laughs> Did you leave that out in the story? Start again. Yeah, right. That's what right, I'm saying. Because I just wound you up about crabs, babies pushing their way out of vaginas, yeah. and Darren Brown calling the pencil. Right, yeah. Little, uh, What's what's the saying about uh, little acorns little, don't little, gather any grounds? Cry, uh, cry wolf. You yeah. can take a fish to water and you can't make it. Do you know you know that saying? Um, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Do you no. know why? Um, because it's next too long. No, what? It's got an awkward neck. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's correct. That is correct. Right. Anyway, well we've still got to come. Uh, right, Carl. It's been bad today. I'm going to apologise to people listening today because you might as well be focused. Do you, do you know? Do you, have you heard the thing that got, uh, Rolling Stone gathers no moss? Yeah. You aware of that? Yeah. Do you know where that's from? Uh, Do you know where, in, where it's from? In Woodstock, right, the band used to go out and get this sort of like moss that used to grow there and it was sort of like slightly hallucinogenic, right? And they used to come back and they used to all go out, like, everyone was out there, mamas and papas were doing it, um, the doors, they all came back. But Mick Jagger and Keith Richards would never do it, but they'd smoke other people's. Yeah. A Rolling Stone never gathers his own moth. That was what it was. <laughs> Seriously, Carl! Right, that's so the we've truth. still got to come. Uh, <laughs> rock busters. Have you heard the saying, a fish in time saves nine? The, s the clues were- Have you heard that? That'll never get off the ground. <laughs> LZ. You've got- Have you heard that saying, out of the frying pan into the saucepan? <laughs> You've Have also you got- uh, Carl. Oh. I'm oh. trying to hold it together now. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, no, we're trying to teach you something, Carl. Yeah, but you're not. Why? Because at least my stuff that I tell you, if you go into a pub and told someone- What? There was a blind girl, she hit her head, she could see. What's that? Well, just don't, don't get down if your eyes are bad. <laughs> <laughs> Right, with- <laughs> No, go round headbutting right, things. Right, oh, Carl, come <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's asking, he's got a question there. What? Um, can Carl get rid of slugs? <laughs> I don't know what that means. I'm almost certain he can. Just tell one well, to, um, if, to, if, uh, if, if he's been listening, if he was listening a few months ago, he would have known how to. Go on. Because I told you what slugs like. What? Getting in letterboxes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what does that get rid of? Put some stamps in your garden. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> They like, well, uh, no, well, they then. like, they like stamp glue. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, that's and how did that help? How does that get rid of them? They'd keep coming back, won't they? Then they'd be going, I can't yeah. believe it, we'd have to climb those boxes now. There's a fellow leaving well, stamps out for us. Go. You've won some prizes and I've sorted you. No, <laughs> how does that get rid of slugs? Leaving stamps out for them, their favourite food. Because they. It's like planting a load of lettuces, they love that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends where he's got them. I thought he meant he's got them in his house. Okay. So, oh, to I put stamps know. on the outside, there go, there's loads of stamps out here, lads, let's leave this house. Right, so... Let's get out of this house. Well, this is what I'm thinking, right, because we can, if, you, if you're not happy with Rockbusters, if we add a little bit to it, and they love the bit I've added, 
then we can slowly fade it out without them knowing. That's it. Do two of your rockbusters and and one of these. Right. Are these Come the prizes, Carl? Carl? They're the prizes. Well, yeah, let's do the prizes. Let's quickly go through them then. Yeah. All right, what we got here? Let's speed this up because I'm dropping off now. Yeah, I think. It's, like, it's either warm in the air or, or this isn't the most scintillating conversation we've ever had. Okay, first thing, there's a CD here. It's uh, tracks that were sampled by <laughs> uh, various artists, including Jay Z, Happy Mondays, and so on. It's the original versions. That might mm. be quite good fun. Sure. I love you. Let me see. It's a number of love songs. Yeah. You've got uh, Blue featuring Elton John on there. Yeah. Chicago. Yeah. Nat King Cole. Some yeah. Great, so I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Retro Dance Masters. Oh, yeah. That's another CD. Dance tracks, yeah. obviously, on there. Oh, it's still knocking about the best. Best Air Guitar Volume 2. Sure. Rubbish. Uh, this is quite good though. It's Paul Whitehouse's uh, TV show Happiness. That's the first series on DVD. Uh, we've also got Stephen Polyakov's The Lost Prince. You can have that in your collection. Probably never watch it, but it might look like you're slightly classy and arty. And so uh, subtitles. <laughs> the best one hit wonders album in the world ever. You've got stuff on there like uh, Nana, 99 Red Balloons, yeah. and uh, M's Pop Music. So not right. that bad a selection actually this week. He's Cut out some of the chaff. Right. Yeah, okay. Sorry, right, here we right. go. Rockbusters. Rockbusters, first one. I uh, will do two of these and I'll play something in a minute. Right, uh, first one. Um, the Australian picks two blokes. What? The Australian picks two blokes. The Australian picks two blokes. The initial? Yeah, the initial E. Right. And the second one. That builder's a bit. I've got that already. It's annoying. <laughs> okay. that, that builder is a bit cute. He's a bit cute. Yeah. All right. And that's B T. BT. BT. That builder's a bit cute. Yeah. And the Australian picks two blokes E. And then what I'm gonna do now is play some sound effects that make up a song and you've gotta guess what the song is. Go on then, right? just do it it's and then the show on the Here we go, here we go. <laughs> There you go. So what song's that? It's yeah. sort of an XFM type okay, song. Okay, well that's isn't it? great. Email so, so first, only. Sorry, I should just clarify that the first two are uh, band names or artist names, but that's the title of the track that we want there. Yeah, that's okay. right. It's that's so right. confusing. No one's ever going to figure this out. They will though. They will. All right. Um, first one was um, the Australian picks two blokes. Uh, the initial was E. The answer there, Eminem. <laughs> M and M. <laughs> All right. The second one. Um, <laughs> that builder is a bit cute. The initials there were B T. That was Bonnie Tyler. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then we introduced a new bit to the show. Um, that song sounds all right. These were the effects you heard. <laughs> and uh, that was Prodigy. Smack my bitch up. Who are you punching there? And could I just say, no animal was harmed in the taping of that. Have you got monkey news for this week? Uh, don't know if I want to do it this week. So, just just because breakfast do it and that, and uh, just just leave it maybe this week. See what happens. See if we need it. See, we'll see. I, sometimes I don't know. Play a record a minute, Carl. I want to talk to I'll talk to you off air. Play a record. Well, what? What's the what's the What's the uh, email address again? Ricky at xfm dot co dot uk. Okay, right, that's where the email the answers in. So we've got to, we've got to remind you who show it is. Play a record. Right. Radiohead, they're there. Like everything they ever do, that's grown on me more and more. Oh, that is brilliant. XFM one of four point nine. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, you know what it's time for, don't you? Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. <laughs> It always gets me, that jingle. It's a joy. Yeah. What's more, please? Well, Carl, do you reckon you could sort out- do, do other people to have real jingles with their name on it and, that, and don't have to say who's in the room, what's happening, and do their own jingles? Well, Christian's got one for it. For Monkey News that he does. Why is Christian doing Monkey News? I don't understand this. Because he did it ages ago. So you ripped it off of no, Christian? I haven't, I haven't ripped it off. I said to him, I said, there's enough Monkey News to go around. <laughs> right? Well, hold on though, I don't want cast-offs. I well, thought this was your idea. Well, let's not do it. But what's no, but wait, new? Wait, wait, Come on, wait. what's new? What? There's monkey news out there. It, it, I mean, if he wants to have a meeting in the week and say, well, this is the news I've got, the way I see it is, he can do it in the week. He's doing like the, you know, the news at ten type monkey news. We're on on a Saturday. We're like the, you know, Jeremy Paxman monkey news night. We look at stuff in more in depth. Well, you very much right? get behind the monkey news. It's true. Yeah. You sort of interpret it. You give it your own spin. You're, you're, you're the man behind the monkey behind the news. I mean, I know that. <laughs> yeah. So are we, so but ours is called monkey news anyway. It's sort of generic term like the news, but ours is called chimpanzee that, isn't it? Yeah, but he's he's seen a bit of monkey news in it. 
Uh, so are we doing it or not? Well, I, I, I've i got no reason I, I, to stop I, doing I, things. I, I, it, it, he probably played Radiohead as well. Well, should I know. Should we not him. do that? I said that David Attenborough did Monkey News before all of us. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but I, I mean, I personally don't listen to Christian because I don't get up that early. So, you know, I'm missing no, out on a lot of monkey news. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not saying, I don't listen to it because I don't get up that early. Right, I'm not right. saying it's a bad show. My point is this, there's a lot of people I imagine who don't listen to, uh, monkey news in the week, they're perhaps they miss it or they're busy. It's nice to have a little kind of omnibus monkey news at the weekend with Carl Pilkington. So that's what this is. So we're doing it then. Let's play the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news night. <laughs> Excellent. Good. So, um, we'll sort of uh, get some monkey experts on maybe next week to dissect it. Right. You ready? Yeah. All right. There's this monkey. Right? Oh, yeah. It's called Jack. Yeah. Right. I got pally with this bloke who worked in a railway station. <laughs> How? How? Pen pals? I, I don't know, I didn't say all internet, that. Probably, internet, probably internet. I'm short Chat rooms on the internet. I'm short <laughs> So, um, anyway, he's helping him out all the time. It's this fella's job, right, to, uh, sort of make sure it's safe for the trains to come in, that sort of thing, right? But he's always working on his own, so he's, he's got his mate Jack in with him, right, this, this little monkey. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they're having a good time, they share lunch together and stuff like that. Anyway, it gets to a point when the fella whose job it is, right, he starts mm. getting old, uh, and Jack, the monkey, starts getting more involved. Presumably this is a chimpanzee as opposed <coughs> to a monkey, you mean? When I you say it's monkey, uh, it's generic term, you mean, you mean, you mean chimps usually, don't you? Yeah. Go on then. <clears throat> so, um, you know, he's, he's clocking the fella, doing his job, and he's thinking, I can do this, right, the monkey. <laughs> okay. I'd love it. Yeah. He's helping out, he's, uh, pulling down the levers and stuff, yeah. so the train's sort of coming on the right line. Sure, 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 yeah, He's yeah, clocking yeah. it, he sticks his head out of the little window, see the train's coming and that. I have British Rider listening. Yeah. Right? Uh, in the end... Oh, yeah. The fella whose job it is, he lost a leg for some reason, couldn't work anymore. Lovely. Gave Jack the job. Yes. Right. Okay. The railway company, happy with that. <laughs> I'm sure they, 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 they interviewed a number of people, but he was the best <laughs> monkey for the job. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's good, isn't it? Well, it's not true. Right, once again. Well, it's not true. Don't hand Steve a piece of paper that someone put on the internet who is probably a bigger mentalist than you. That's not proof. It's not true. At no point did a railway company give a chimpanzee the job of signalman. It was ages ago. Uh, uh, what? Steve, when was it? it was before like before trains, probably. Well, it's uh, in the 1880s. Yeah. Uh, according to this piece of paper, which is what you've based your monkey news on. Now, of course, I think ITN and a lot of the news channels they tend to get lots of independent <laughs> confirmation of their news before they give it out as fact. <laughs> but you've got an email from someone, so let's assume that's real. It says, "For this, Jack was officially put on the railway payroll, earning two cents per day and have half a bottle of beer on Saturday." <laughs> that's what we pay you, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even get the beer. <laughs> oh, dear, he's not allowed to drink, are you? Someone emailed in, actually, and said, uh, Carl, some years ago, did you die and they took your face <laughs> and transplanted it onto that of a chimpanzee? <laughs> <laughs> it would make a lot of sense. I've never seen you. Never. He always, he always has um, t-shirts right done up and long sleeved. I bet he's hairy under there. Yeah. I bet you are hairy because you have to shave right up to your eyes. You're one of them, aren't you? And I can see the growth and it comes out the, the top there. Are you really hairy underneath? I'm pretty hairy. Are you really? Well, what's wrong with, what's up with that? You're a, you're a human Z, aren't you? That's why you're fascinated with them and why you, your, your IQ is sort of about 80. I think you might be. You might, I, I don't mean uh, there was any, I think it was a genetic sort of, sort of throwback. Well, you're pretty hairy. Look <laughs> at your arms. <laughs> <laughs> Just, look, give me that banana and shut up. Play a record. That's mine. Elbow. All right, Fallen Angel on XFM 104.9. Well, we're back. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl's all a little bit, I don't know, he's a bit frustrated, he's sort of a bit sweaty and fed up today, aren't you, because of the heat. It's too much though, isn't it? He's taken it out, it's he was sort much. of, wanted to fight. You know he doesn't use like, like a fight, I sort of like lead on him and try and rub his head. Yeah. But today he was, he was sort of leading it, he was sort of like getting a little bit... I, if I didn't know better, I just said it was sexual frustration. Well I was like watching, you, Rick, if you don't want me saying I was watching, not in that way, just for watching It was sort of like he was going, oh I want to hit you, and yeah. I was thinking, does he want to hit me or does he want to do something else to me? Exactly. What were your thoughts, Carl? Exactly. I mean, I saw him sort of wrestling with you on the floor, and you clearly weren't enjoying it, but he was really Yeah, what it. was that going on? What, what's the change? Why are you suddenly sort of... Well, uh, what, 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 what are you trying to say? 
No, I'm not. I'm just saying it was weird that you suddenly. It was like you were all. Oh, you're don't saying know. Uh, a bit, sort of a bit gay. No, is that what you're saying? No, but what was? Suzanne accused me of that in the week. Why? Go for being a bit gay. So I'm sure you're gay. Why? Just because I was moaning about stuff. She said, "Oh, you're a drama queen." <laughs> 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 right, well that's, well, that's what, what were you moaning about? Not just, having enough gay sex? Just, no. Just she, the, the, she didn't have a knob. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's going, oh, why don't you oh. get yourself a nice little knob? Yeah. I mean, can I call you Frank, <laughs> Could you wear this false beard? Yeah. It's yeah. just, um, well we'll talk about it later, it was about the Seven Wonders. I just wasn't that impressed. <laughs> he wasn't impressed by it, he said, he said, uh, <laughs> well, we're saying that, yeah, well, we've got a top show That's coming up, haven't we? But if you are a little bit, kind of, just a little bit sexually, you know, don't be afraid to, to let it out. I mean, if you want mm. us to relieve you of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's have a little bit of Maggie Mae by oh, Rod. Oh, it's some beautiful day. Killing a Georgie. Um, that's your favourite song, isn't it? Oh. That's yeah, weird, isn't it? Strange, isn't it? That's weird. I'd, I'd, I'd like to hear Rod Stewart singing about a lovely lady, please, Carl. As would I. <laughs> you can picture whoever you want. <laughs> Carl, cheers, cheers, cheers. What are you thinking, Carl? What have you been doing this week? What's been going on? Yeah. Uh, You'd be miserable, miserable because of the heat, obviously. That's getting me down. Yeah. Uh, it's just the way people wander about as well with next to out on. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm always amazed by, uh, the men, because there's a certain breed of man, uh, guys, sometimes it's kind of builders, mechanics, taxi drivers, van drivers, but not necessarily, students, all sorts of guys, and you'll sort of watch them walking down the street, they'll be walking down the street, girls, you know, we'll see in their sort of summer gear, and it's literally, you know, eyes go, look at those legs, oh, knockers, oh, I can't believe my luck, oh, you know, and they're sort of talking to their mates, they're checking, it. oh, it's an arse, I can't believe it, oh, yeah. and it's like, <laughs> it's like they sort of forget, there's like some kind of amnesia that sweeps over them during the, the winter Like months. it's a surprise. Yeah, and then it's like, every time summer rolls around again, and girls pop, they go, I can't believe it, where have they been? They're back. Yeah. 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 And they get so excited. Oh, excuse me now, but did that tits under there all winter? <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah. Uh, Bloody hell. Look how brilliant. brilliant. It's great to see them again. <laughs> yeah. And then he gets, yeah. us, he gets us sort of walks over and they go, where have they gone? Man? <laughs> they happened? just don't say anything. They just like, <laughs> get on with it. They exactly. they're yeah. reminded. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah. They completely forget. <laughs> yeah. For a sort of half a year. <laughs> uh, there was a fellow this morning, I just nipped out, having a cup of tea, reading the paper, reading that bit about nudists and that. Sure. sure. And, uh, little old fella. Must have been. Seventy-five. Okay. Walks past. Shoe socks. Sort of shorts, but because he's old, I don't think he's got like a normal pair of shorts. So we're like suit pants, but short. <laughs> right. so really smart shorts that I've never seen before. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, with, with him being old and thin, yeah, it's just don't do that. Don't walk around. Like what well, the legs? Put, the legs in the back. He looked like a little tortoise without his shell on. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to see a tortoise without his shell on. Yeah. Just to see if it would run really fast and go, this is brilliant. Just yeah. scamper along. I saw a grotesque thing. I saw, I think it's Britain's fattest man. I'm not sure. Mm. He was huge. I mean, I don't wish him any ill, but so big. It was ludicrous. He was waddling down um, Oxford Street and he was, I mean, genuinely, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of you know, ginormous mm. people. Rick Waller, for instance, yeah. turns my stomach. This guy was twice <laughs> as big. He was extraordinary. And he sat down on a big bench and literally took up the whole space. And he, he reached into his bag, he was having his lunch, and he was eating an apple. And I really felt like I wanted to slap him on the back and go, he's a bit late for that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's probably starting now. He's probably starting thinking that I'm gonna make a change. And imagine if you'd have said that. Yeah. And he'd have, it'd have been awful, wouldn't it? Yeah. He took, he, he sl cut it in half, put it between two slices of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, waited, I don't know how you get and that. And waited for a pig to come past. Yeah. Shoved it in his mouth. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just swallowed it all. I don't oh. know how he gets that big. And it was like, he'd come out to sort of soak up some of the sun. You know. Well, you look better with a tan. <laughs> I suppose so. Yeah. Yeah. Was he wearing loose black clothes? <laughs> he was, of course that, he was wearing That loose works black up to a point. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> then, you know, yeah. there's, there's, there, it's not fooling anyone. There's like vertical stripes. Yeah. To make it look yeah. Just people just walk past and think it's night. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> so, Carl. So, little. yeah, so, so that's, that's, you know, that's been annoying me with the weather and that. Yeah. And then, uh... I love the warm weather. Oh. Although I can't sleep at night. I had, I had two hours in front, just went and lay down in front of the window, in front of the French window, just because it was just too hot last night. 
But if I can sleep, I love hot weather. I love walking around when it's sunny. It's better for you. People are usually happier in hot weather. The sun is good for you. I mean, it, it has been hot. I mean, it's 100 degrees. It's probably too hot to work, but... Mental. I can't, I can't think straight and stuff. But yeah, your little baldy nice. head, isn't it bad for it? Cos it just... Doesn't it get you... Make, make your brain a little bit hot? Well, <laughs> I... I mean, I've just got my head on show. What about the nudists? <laughs> <laughs> worry about them before you worry about me. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, no, another, another thing that happened in the week, um, you know, I've just had builders round, sorting the kitchen out. Yeah, right? sure. Uh, so virtually skint. But another problem happens. Boiler starts playing up. Right. Right. So, uh, and you've got to have a shower in this weather. You've got to, you've got to be able to have a shower on that and freshen up and what have you. Well, I have a shower know. every day anyway. I mean, two yeah. sometimes, but yeah. Yeah, but yeah. if you haven't got any hot water. You can't, can you? Uh, right? Cold showers, all right, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Go on. So anyway, so uh, fella comes round. Yeah. Ninety quid. Ninety quid. Ninety quid. Um, all he did turns up says, "Oh yeah, 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 yeah." Uh, just bang it. Just ninety bang the, quid. Bang the boiler. That's <laughs> ninety quid. <laughs> Last time I banged a boiler, it cost me ninety quid. <laughs> and there was a, there was a lot of leakage then. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, you know, I understand where you're going. <laughs> yeah, I do sympathise. <laughs> but you know, like I, I catch them out as well. Do you know, like, you know, I know they're they're up to no good yeah. and stuff. They don't earn the money. Sure. And he was in the bathroom, so I sort of creep up and I try and stick my head round the door to see what he's. What up when, to. when a bloke in the bathroom? <laughs> right. Where That's weird, it? isn't it? So you creep up to a man in the bathroom and put your head round without seeing you. Go on, though. Fair enough. Right, do you want to go over what happened that time when we were in the pub and I go to the toilet and you're trying to get in? <laughs> what happened? Is that normal? Go on, what happened? Go on, I'm not, go on, I'm not ashamed, what happened? <laughs> go on, go on, go on, say it. <laughs> say it. What happened? <laughs> well, don't start a story and then don't finish no, it. Oh, we'll do it later. <laughs> Tell he, us was, he was in the, he was in the cubicle and he got in the cubicle to have a piss to avoid me annoying him, right? So what I did, I got some of that liquid soap <laughs> and I just put it over and squirted on him. Then he came out going, look, it looks like someone's just effing jizzed on me. I've got effing jizz on me back. I, then... I had to walk through Soho without me back. <laughs> <laughs> I was walking to so and um, wh when was it we had to go to the, uh, when we went to the Ivy with those people? Uh, Wednesday. Uh, something like that, yeah. We had a business meeting, right, right? and, uh, I, I was, we were walking out of the Ivy, it was about half eleven, and I was going down Old Compton Street, and as I got to just going past Mamma Mia, something hit me on the shoulder, I looked down, and obviously it was bird shit, but just for, for, just for a split second I thought it looked like jizz, and I, was, I just thought, oh God, because, no, <laughs> and I sort of woke up and I thought, right, I went, I got to wash my hands and like, get in, it was, obviously wasn't jizz, it was just, it was pigeon shit or something, right, but I, I had this pamphlet once when I was at Ulu, Terence Higgins Trust left this pamphlet, and it was all stuff like safe sex, and it was stuff like, it, honestly, I swear, it said things like, you don't have to have four people <laughs> in the course. It said you can do lots of other things with your lover, like... <laughs> it said, like, um, like coming to some fruit, e.g. a melon. It, it, it says, um, with friends, um, just come on the back of one of them, right? And then this is the bit that made me think, and I thought, oh my god, when I looked down sort of on my shoulder. It says... <laughs> Come out of a window! <laughs> yeah, on any passing celebrity. <laughs> oh, God! Oh, I've got to get that pamphlet. If anyone's got that pamphlet, it was brilliant. So, uh, yeah. Good, right, well, um, let's play a record. Do you reckon to do <laughs> stuff like this on his show? He's back. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. <laughs> Darkness, growing on me, XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. I bored, I lost him, didn't I, in a little conversation. Yeah, there. you were talking about quantum physics, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, I was just explaining what a black hole was, because we were talking about that as well last night. And just halfway through, he just went, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Put his headphones on. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, it's the, th dear. the thing about Carl is he speaks with such authority about things that he thinks he knows about. Monkeys. And when you try, yeah, and when you try to explain to him about stuff, you know, he thinks, he goes, no, of course ghosts exist. And yeah. you try to explain to him why it's conceivable they don't. Ah, no, no, no. He can't, he can't be bothered with that. Yeah, he's, you did all your learning at about 12, didn't you? Yeah, but I'm still picking bits up now. <laughs>
<laughs> said without irony. <laughs> oh, brilliant. What have you learned recently? Anything interesting recently you've learned? Darwin. That's why I was asking you about him. Right. Yeah, Just, Darwin. Uh, we know what he did, didn't you? I don't know what he did. I just read the other day that they've they've got a treatment for whatever illness he had. I thought it was a bit late. <laughs> 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 Can you imagine that saying that to his family? What did Darwin do? What did Darwin do? You I don't know. know. You were um, you were just trying to explain it to me, but I'm, I'm busy doing stuff, aren't I? I can't take it all in whilst I'm sorting the ads out, putting CDs in. You know what well, I mean? He, he, Ticking he, off the knob news. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he formulated the theory of evolution based on natural selection. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but wait, wait, though. Do you, you think that's good? Do you think he's, do you think that's well done? You're impressed with that? Because you're not impressed with things like, you know, you famously said, uh, um, Newton, so it said gravity, but it was already there. If we'd have been floating around, it'd been a problem, but we weren't, so I keep out of it. That's what you said. You said, Einstein, I've never used EMC squared in my life, but the bloke who invented the video recorder, I watch one a week. <laughs> so I wonder if you're impressed by Darwin formulating, I think, the most important scientific theory since... Uh, Newton's laws. Has it made a difference? Or, or whatever he said, would it have happened anyway? You can't do that. You're not allowed to say that. You can't say, oh, well done, I'd have found it eventually anyway. You can't do that. You've got to give people their due, do you know what I mean? But, but now it's difficult to find stuff because there's less to find out now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's uh, not a competition. But on what scale? On what scale are you lo looking at? Why do you mean there's less to find out? Well, now, I mean, they, they're bringing stuff out that... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's just... The iPod. Well, yeah. Sure. Didn't see the point in that, no. the iPod. Do you know, he actually listed the three songs he'd ever want to carry around with him. I can't remember what they were. What are the three what songs you'd put Killing the Georgie. Killing the Georgie, yeah. Yeah, uh, what else? Probably have, uh, Elvis in the ghetto. Right. Yeah. Moving. Living in the city. Stevie do you know why? Like, do you know why that? Because that's that's like a little film to him. Yeah. That's three songs where there's a little story. He knows the ending. Yeah. But it's someone singing it to him. <laughs> a <laughs> little... Just put them on it. How many songs can I hold? Well, seven and a half thousand. thousand. Put that on seven and a half thousand times. Sure. Well, you don't need to, do you? I mean, that is like that joke, the the, the wish. Put, imagine putting on seven and a half thousand. You know that, that joke about you got three wishes. It says a never-ending bottle of Guinness, and you go second wish. You gotta have two more of these. Yeah. That's, you don't need to put them on seven and a half thousand times, do you? No, you don't, you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> never mm. mind, Carl. Never mind. He's on XFM 104.9, Holiday Song. He's talking about, um, people coming around and just banging the boiler and charging 90 quid. Um, I think it was last Christmas. We had a dripping tap, right? And, uh, it started off just dripping a little bit. And then, after a cut, I thought, you know, we'd get that sorted out. We couldn't actually turn the tap. Couldn't, it was just solid where the, the, the washer had gone. And then, uh, over Christmas, like, as like before Christmas, um, it just started flowing. It was just, like, on. And I was thinking, this is terrible. It was totally worse. It was the hot tap. And, uh, of course, everything, the caretaker going away, everything had been closed down. So I called out an emergency plumber. Christmas. Yeah. Like, he couldn't get it to turn the tap off. Right? So, um, he was trying and trying. And in the end, he said, well, what I could do is I could just squash the pipe. Right, and cut the pipe and squash it, and then you could change the whole thing. I went, yeah, whatever. Right, because I can't have this. So, uh, he said, I've got to go to the van. And he got this tool, came up to squash the pipe. He was only a young lad, right? Wasn't strong enough. So I had to help him squash the pipe. Right. He squashed the pipe, cut it, put a little nozzle on it, you know, just to seal it, right? And uh, I was 180 quid. 180 quid? And I was to say, surely that's half mine. Yeah. I helped it, and I was sort of being sarcastic. When Johnny was there, I was going, how much was that tool you... He went, oh, it was only about nine quid. I went, it pays for itself, isn't it? Yeah. And I was going, can I get one of them? He was going, yeah, get them anywhere. Oh, obviously, yeah. didn't it? And then he went, I wrote a cheque for 90 quid, and he went, oh, I didn't charge you for the nozzle on the end. I went, no. He went, I said, how much is that then? He said, two for a second. I'll give you cash for that. Two pounds fifty. <laughs> Hundred and eighty two pounds fifty. So he hadn't even really sorted the problem out. But what can you do what can you do? You know, yeah. he wasn't ripping me off. That's the prices. Yeah. He's not gonna go, I'll tell you what, mate, because you helped me, uh call it quits. <laughs> yeah. Just buy me lunch. <laughs> yeah. It's not gonna happen. Yeah. My mate was locked out of his uh flat once. Um and he went out and shut the door behind him, and that was it. And he'd looked through a letterbox, and he could see his keys. Mm -hmm. Right? Phoned a locksmith, says, Look, can you come round? I can see my keys. Right? I just have to go out, and he went, well, yeah, but I don't, that doesn't matter. I said, I'm going to try it, it's 90 quid. And he went, 90 quid? He went, but 
I can see the keys. He went, yeah, I can get them for you. And he went, and my mate said, you're going to come round, you're going to charge me 90 quid, and you're going to scoop my keys up with a bent coat hanger. And the locksmith said, have you got a bent coat hanger, mate? It's brilliant. But it's a fair point, isn't it? Do it you know is what I mean? It's a valid point, that's it. And what, what can you do? Yeah. I'd have gone, ha, thanks for the expert advice, and then asked the neighbour for a bent coat hanger. And they went, well, we'll call it 100 quid. <laughs> yeah. But that's more expensive than the locksmith. Well, yeah, because you're going to illegal traders. <laughs> exactly. We've got no licence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got, we've got to yeah. pay a little bit more in case we get fined. <laughs> exactly. But that's, yeah. that's what was going on when, you know, the, the fellow was round the other day fixing the boiler in the bathroom. Just wanted to make sure that he was, that he was working on it, because it all went quiet in there. Mm. He had the door shut. I'm trying to have a little quick, quick sort of peep, <laughs> seeing if he's doing anything. I push the door. <laughs> like, it sounds. But just pushing the door slowly, and he's going, "Don't come in." <laughs> he's like, "What are you doing?" Well, what was he doing? Don't know. But then he's like, three down. Probably doing a crossword again. <laughs> that's, that's what annoys me. The, the way that you know, it's all secret. You're not coming in, and you, you hear the odd bang now and again. He's probably sat there, crossword three down, giving it the old. Just now and again. With his foot. Just, just, just annoying. Yeah. How much annoying. did he charge you? 90 quid. It's just under 90 quid. Yeah. Yeah. And all he said was, you know, give it a bang. If you don't work again, give it a bang. What does that mean? <laughs> is that an air block and they just like, what is it? I don't know. It's not that complicated. You wouldn't think a boil is that complicated. It's not like understanding, you know, how a, a fast breeder works or a computer. It's a big lump of metal without water in it. How, how can we not know how that... Yeah. We were discussing yesterday, me and Glenn, we were trying to work out how our fridge works. Right. It's pretty cool. Magic? It is the magic comes down the electricals into the frozen peas. <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Can't still... I know it's something to do with the... The hydrofluorocarbons are, can exist at much lower temperatures without freezing. So when they're in the fridge, sort of under pressure, as they flow round, because the, the pressure goes down... They take energy from the, uh, the it's play record. It's perhaps a discussion to have in play the record, club, but not on the air. Play record, I club. still can't figure out. I've never quite understood how a plane stays in the air. It always unnerves so me when I'm in a plane. Turning a tap on, getting water. How <laughs> basic are we going to go? <laughs> Carl goes walking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here's a bit of science for you. Go on. Right. Um, read the other day. Yeah. If you dug a big hole. Right. Oh, God. Started digging, say in uh, wherever, the Trafalgar Square, right? Yeah. Uh, you dig a big hole and you keep digging, yeah. and you go right through the earth, right, out to the other side. Yeah. So you, you're somewhere in Australia or something, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then you go back to come back again, come back to London. Right. Stand next to the hole, jump in it. Apparently, you can jump through the world in 42 minutes. <laughs> it's interesting. But then I was thinking, will you fall, and then when you come out the other end, would you fall back again? Well, yeah, you would, wouldn't you? What would happen is, you'd accelerate, uh, ten metres per second, per second, to the centre of the earth, you but, you'd have, but, you know, you'd, but, but you'd have such inertia, you'd nearly go as far out the other end before... It was like a bungee jump, so you'd nearly get as far as the other end, and then you'd go back again, and you'd keep going until, back and forth, getting getting further and further away from making it, until you went da -da 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 -da, sort of back and forth in the centre, and then you'd stay still in the centre. Have you drilled a hole through the earth? <laughs> get in touch. Email xfm.co.uk. <laughs> and just let us know how you got on. Did you get to the other side? Did you get to Australia? Did you buy one of those funny cork hats? Did how you see Paul Hogan? How does a fish work? <laughs> Uh, but anyway, the paper round one. Uh, paper round, I'd still say it's the best job I've ever had. <laughs> and he means it! No, I really oh. enjoyed it. It's like, you know, oh. you, you, you don't have to work with anyone else, right? Uh, so you make your own rules. Just think of that. Um, yep. you know, um, you sort of You're around. spreading information well, yeah, to people, yeah, vital information. Giving a service, yeah. and no one else is around, you know, you can just do what you want and think about stuff whilst you're cycling around on your bike. It's really good. Yeah. So, um, so anyway. Imagine the stuff he's thinking about <laughs> when he's riding around <laughs> the bike. Like, oh, oh so, <laughs> getting in the head of a salamander. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> I, I loved it, and even though I only got like 50p a day, right, no matter what the weather was like and stuff, I used to get up at half past four and, uh, go and do the round. 
And um Why'd you get a bar pass for? Because I wanted to watch the Pink Panther at 5.30. So I wanted to get me paper round done. I said, why didn't you watch the Pink Panther? And then, and then, then he, went, he went, oh, I can't sit there thinking I've got my paper round to do. <laughs> It'll ruin it for him. Yeah. So is it a good job or not? So 4.30 4 I was up, up and about. And this morning it was like winter, really bad winter, bad snow, you know, freezing cold, really windy and all that. And my mum said to me before I went to bed, she said, don't be getting up tomorrow. I'll give you the 50p. I said, it's not about the 50p. <laughs> so, you know, people want the papers and stuff. <laughs> so, um... Conscientious. <laughs> so, anyway, I went to bed thinking, you know, that's it. I'm, I'm, I've told her I'm still going, so, you know, whatever. Go to sleep, get up in the morning, and, uh, put all my kit on. And I, I used to have layers of clothing on, because it was really cold. They had, like, a big anorak on, with the fur on. They had, like, waterproof pants. And I got my paper round bag. And, uh, I went downstairs to get out, and tried to open the door, and it was locked. Oh, God, so, uh, so she'd locked it so I couldn't go out. So I'm searching around the house looking for the keys. She must have hid them somewhere. I thought, oh, God, you know, I've got the papers to do. So I thought, how can I get out? So I went upstairs, climbed out of the bathroom window. God. Right, and to try and jump out of the bed bathroom window onto the porch. But the problem was, I had so much gear on, I was like the Michelin man. <laughs> so I could hardly, I could hardly move as it is. Yeah. And I'm trying to get out the window, and I, I, I'm like, Try to stretch down like that, get me foot on the, on the porch. And my bag got caught on like the hook of, do you know like how you have a hook so you can put the window open? Right, yeah, like, yeah. The little yeah, arm yeah. goes on. My bag had got caught on that. I was holding on to the, like the, the wall and my foot on the thing so I couldn't sort of pull it, pull it away in case I pulled it away and then fell on my head. Yeah. So I'm stuck there. Dangling. Dangling. My dad comes back from working nights. Yeah. He thinks I'm a burglar. <laughs> Gets out his gun. So, <laughs> so he's shouting and stuff, going mad and going, Dad, it's me. And he had to give us a hand using a. <laughs> he's heard that wily trick in Manchester before. <laughs> <laughs> he had to help me using a washing prop thing, a big stick. What did he do? Well, he said, just that hold on for your dear life, and I I'll sort of push the paper bag off the hook. Why and didn't he go upstairs and sort it out? It was at that point where I was in the middle, there was nothing you could do, do you know what I mean? Mm, it's at that point where. You've just got to make a decision. Yeah. And by the time you go upstairs, who knows what might have happened. Sure. Do you know yeah. what I mean? You've got to act there and then, don't <laughs> around. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so... And you can hear downstairs, now here he is, the Pink Panther. <laughs> yeah. Dad! <laughs> Hurry up! Pink Panther, ever so pink. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that, that was close to death, because I must have been about 30 foot in the air. Yeah. And I would have, you know, that would have been nasty for Phil fell to the concrete sure. paving, so. Well, and, uh, there's, more, there's more to come. Should we play a record and mm. come back to this? Because he's got more. Oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, no there, there must no, be one no, of them no. where you did fall on your head. All right, here we are then. Uh -huh. Oh, Scorpio Rising, Death in Vegas, on XFM 104.9, about five past one, Saturday. Here we are again then. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. <laughs> I can't believe our luck. <laughs> oh, all right, Carl. All right. Yeah. So, what are we doing today then? Producer. <laughs> right. <we're laughs> oh, sorry, I always laugh instinctively when I hear Carl's name and that word. Yeah. Associated. Right. Well, why is that? Because it is. I, I had to come up with some new features again for this new year. Okay. I'm excited. What have you come up with? Paul. <laughs> oh, Oh. We we are the backbone of this show, Carl. Yeah, we're gonna we're tell we're tell we we've come up with some pretty. What's yours first? Right. Go on. Right. Well, rockbusters. That's old. That's not a new feature. Yeah, but we'll keep it. Right. For another, for another so you're bit. just keeping an old feature. Okay, okay. Okay. Now it's an old favourite. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are going. Phew! I was worried that he'd lose rockbusters. Rick, I just come up with a new idea. Why don't we just play some records that we like? There's a new idea for 2003. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know what we can't, Steve? Because the library's out of order. Oh yeah, the record library, we can't get in there, we're we not allowed to get in there. We had to scrounge something from Capital Gold. So anyway. Right, Go on. So we got Rockbusters. What are they doing with the library? Are they getting some records in that we want to <laughs> play? Is that their new idea? I know, let's get some records in yeah, that we want to play. Yeah, they're out the, uh, the Gina G. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Four non blondes, goodbye. <laughs> Give that to Foxy. <laughs> Go on, so sorry, Carl. We'll do, um... <laughs> We started Do We Need Em in 2002. Do We Need Em? Do We Need Em? Yeah. yeah. We'll We've got, continue that. Got a new one, haven't you? Explain that later. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and then the new stuff comes in. Ooh. Right? Um, as always, I like to sort of get words and tweak them and stuff. Sure. Yeah. So I was thinking of either doing something <laughs> with, um, there's a lot of weird rituals, <coughs> isn't there? A lot right? of weird rituals? Yeah. There's weird stuff going on around the world. Okay. There is, yeah. 
Um, and I was gonna tweak that to Rick Chules. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Again, start with the title, the pun first, then working out what it is. And well, then, I find and I, some stuff. And, oh, right. So it's it's specifically just stuff what? that goes on, like um, rituals. There was uh, most of the weird stuff I've heard about happened to you in Manchester yeah. in your early years. Well, in India, apparently, it's good to have uh, a flat head. <laughs> so the uh, <laughs> again, just <laughs> flirting, just bordering on the racist, <laughs> yeah. but never really gets there. Always well, because there's no, there's no, intent. there's no hate, there's no hate. It's, it's just clumsy, it's just, exactly. just stupidity. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, go on. What Sorry, do you so mean? What do you, what mean, do you mean? It's good to have a flat. What do you mean? It's good to have a flat in India. We'll, we'll talk about it later. Brilliant. That's, that's rituals. Thanks. So uh, you've, you've, you've hooked a few people. You've hooked a few in. Go on. All right. So we'll have that way. So it's essentially like educating Ricky, only it's specifically about rituals. Is that? Is that, strictly speaking, what it is? Okay. I suppose so, but then again yeah. you could say radio is all the same because it's people talking. <laughs> okay, Carl, brilliant. Yeah, brilliant no, comeback. Yeah, so, brilliant comeback. Not all talking nonsense, though. Well. So that's where we're different. Go on. Um, also, right, I like teaching you stuff. Yeah. And you've yeah. done well. So what I'm, what I'm thinking is, rather than just touching on a topic, T sort of giving you a few bits of information on one See, topic. See, this is what I'd like to do, because the last thing you taught me, I remember, was there was a blind girl, she hit her head and she could see, and that's all I got. Yeah. So if you could go into that a little bit more, that would have been educating me. Well, today we're featuring, uh, stuff on World War One and Two, Blimey. right? Oh, So that's, that's, uh, that little title for all this little thing is, uh, what do you think of that then? <laughs> 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 what do you think of that then? <laughs> Play right. record. So Rick, can I have just thought of a joke? Go on. What's the similarity between Lord of the Rings and this show? They're both rubbish. 